One of the things I remember when I was first learning Greek is it just seemed overwhelming. And a lot of my Greek was self-taught, so I was reading on my own, trying to figure it out. And I just have a real passion for encouraging students that they can do it. I know what it feels like to feel that this is really overwhelming. But after teaching for a long time, I began to realize that students were looking for something that would help them internalize some basic concepts. So I wrote this for the struggling seminary student who really wants to get a handle on Greek. I've also had my material used with college students, so I had that in mind when I was writing this grammar. How can I help students really get into the world that they want, which is the world of biblical languages, in a way that's going to be accessible? But I know that there are people who don't have the opportunity to go to seminary, so I also had them in mind as well. I tried to write this for the person who might be joining with a few other people and try to learn Greek on his own or her own with a group and a book and some videos and really be able to work through. So there's a lot of people who I think would really be able to benefit. Uh, when I graduated from college, I went into a church intern program, and there were really wonderful opportunities for training there. We learned all kinds of ministry things, church history, theology, it was great. And I had a little bit of exposure to Greek. We went through uh, with a pastor, a first year Greek grammar, and then the second year I went through another uh, series of texts with another person who was actually pretty good in Greek. Following that, I was actually asked by the church to teach first year Greek. And this was a little bit terrifying because I really didn't know Greek. So what I did is I just went and got all the grammars that were available to me and I started summarizing them. And each week I tried to put together something coherent for my students so that I could teach them Greek. So I've always told my students the best way to learn something is to teach it. So much of my learning of Greek came when I was trying to explain it to other people and trying to figure out how do I explain these concepts? How do I make it clear for them? How do I make it relevant? How do I give them a passion for applying that to scripture? When I came to seminary 20 years ago, I started taking official Greek classes and formal Greek uh, training. And it was great for me. It was the first time that I was actually able to be in classes where I could learn and really explore advanced Greek questions. When I started my master's level training, I was also teaching at the same time. So simultaneous with my learning, I've always been teaching. One of the things I loved when I was doing my master's work was, as I said, the opportunity to be able to teach at the same time. When I went into my PhD studies, I was also able to spend time teaching, honing the craft of learning how to teach first year Greek. So I've had a lot of experience both teaching as well as formal education with my master's and my PhD focusing on Greek and different aspects of Greek. Um, it's been a wonderful opportunity to learn how to apply what I've learned in a very formal context and how to distill that for my students in teaching. I found that a lot of times in teaching, what you present first and how you, if you present that really clearly, that's what students tend to remember and carry with them. So one of the things that I'm trying to do after many years of teaching is to give those foundational things up front that, that students can hang on to. So in this grammar, we're going to start with actually some very basic linguistic concepts that will lay a solid foundation, and we'll draw upon those over and over throughout the course. Then we'll get into verbs, and we're going to talk about how Greek verbs function. They're actually quite different than English verbs. Greek verbs are not time-based, and so we need to do a little bit of work in understanding what that means. After we've focused on verbs, we're going to start looking at nouns and prepositions and some other very basic noun-type uh, words such as adjectives and pronouns. Then we're going to keep building on our verb base. So Greek has six different tense forms and we'll add each one and explain and build upon previous concepts. So we'll keep working through the text that way. We're going to work with uh, finite verb forms which have person and number and then we'll start looking at participles, eventually infinitives and other verb forms. And all along we'll keep working on our noun forms. So one of the things that I've really tried to do that I think makes this grammar unique is to apply linguistic categories and to try to give things to students in a way that is really intuitive. So for instance, when there's hard concepts that will be difficult for students to learn, I've tried to present those in a way that they can internalize them. One example would be that I present the present active and middle together because the middle voice is not something that students are very familiar with. So I try to reinforce what the middle is doing. It's basically active with a nuance. 
So we do that multiple times before students even have any exposure to the passive voice. Most students know something about the passive, that's something that's in their language, so they can apply that. So what I've tried to do is to present grammar in a way that will help students to internalize. I joke sometimes it's the least you need to know, and I want students to have really clear categories in place that they can draw upon. Um, I try to focus on form and function, so rather than telling all of the options, all of the ways that a particular case, like the genitive case, could function, instead I want them to have an intuitive grasp of what the genitive does. It describes. It's telling us something about another word, and that's something that students can internalize. We're also going to be working on vocabulary along the way. So at the end of the course, you should be able to read through many parts of the New Testament. You'll be surprised at how much you can read along and translate on the fly. One of the things that my students tell me a lot about this material is that it's very clear. So I'm hoping that professors who use this material will also find that it's pretty easy to teach from. There aren't a lot of things that are unique to my approach. I try to be clear, I try to be straightforward, I try to be grounded in linguistic concepts, but there aren't special ways that I approach it that would be inaccessible for other professors to use and to apply. And one of the strengths, I think, is that I've learned over the years is that students need time to integrate the material. So spaced throughout the textbook are four integration chapters that take all the previous material and apply it to a text that has been modified from the New Testament to be at the level of students. This is a great opportunity for professors to amplify things that they know their students need, to revisit topics that maybe weren't as clear the first go around for students, but also to incorporate their own ways of talking about the text. They may want to apply what I've done to other New Testament texts for their students. The goal is to always be getting students into the New Testament, and this gives professors a lot of opportunities to bring in other verses that they like or other examples from the New Testament that would help. I believe at the very core that language is theological. It's one of the ways that we bear the image of God, and one of the things that language does is communicate. I think this happens across all languages. Languages communicate differently, but basically there's some uh, substructure, some deep structure kinds of things that really are common to languages. So one of the things that I've tried to do is to tap into what students already know about language. Now, it's very common that students, when they're learning a language, don't know how to talk about their own language. So what we do at the very beginning is also teach students how to think about language, how to think about how language functions. This is intuitive for students, but they haven't stopped to think about it. So once we've articulated that in the context of English, which students often find that they learn English when they're learning another language, then we can start appropriating those concepts as we go forward into Greek. So again, most students who are learning a language already know about verbs. They already know some structural things about language. So what I try to do is to take some of those structural concepts and then apply them to how this works in Greek so they can begin to see parallels. Greek and English are similar at one level, but they're actually quite different in many other le levels. So what I try to do is to help students understand some basic concepts and then begin to apply those concepts to Greek. In my years of teaching, I've often found that once students begin to understand how to think about their native tongue, that helps them to learn another language. So what I try to do is to help students realize what they already know about language and to encourage them that that's going to help them to understand Greek so they can begin to talk about language in general and then begin to apply what they've learned to how they're learning Greek. This really does help students to learn Greek more quickly because they're beginning to make parallels to things they already know. I've tried really hard to strike a balance between having too few words and making students fill in the gaps or having too many words where students are just overwhelmed. So what I've tried to do is to explain things in a very clear, straightforward, intuitive way, ways that students can grasp with lots of illustrations, lots of examples straight from the New Testament, but not giving them more than they need to know. That's a hard thing. I like to joke that you simplify a student's universe in the first year, but you have to do that well, because if you simplify it too much, when they get into later studies, it's overwhelming. But if you give them too much information, that's also overwhelming. So one of the things I've tried really hard to do is to find that middle ground where there's enough explanation, it's clear, it's straightforward, it's easy to grasp and to internalize, 
and then it gives a good solid foundation that can be used to build upon, but not giving them so much information. So not every paradigm is going to be talked about, not every example is going to be talked about, but I'm really driven by what are the things that are going to serve students, help them, encourage them, lay a solid foundation so they can study Greek the rest of their lives. You know, sometimes students think that their professors are really far removed and can't remember what it's like to be a student, but I well remember that it was difficult. A lot of my learning Greek was by myself and I was trying to figure it out so I could teach it and it just seemed overwhelming at times. It can feel foreign, you don't know the alphabet, everything seems different, but you can do it. One of the things that encourages me is to realize that in God's providence, this is the language that he chose to use to communicate himself. So don't get discouraged. God wants you to be able to read his word, and he wants you to learn Greek. And also, don't compare yourself with other people. There are some people who just get it quickly. So I want to really encourage you, don't get discouraged after a couple of lessons when it feels overwhelming or you're not sure why. Just have fun. Ask the Spirit to help you. Look at each one of the lessons as a challenge and just look at what you're going to learn. And one of the things I also encourage students is keep looking back. Look back at how much you've learned. When you were first starting with chapters 1 and 2, they were really difficult and they felt overwhelming. But as you progress and you go back and look at those earlier chapters, you're going to be amazed at how much you know. Another thing that I often encourage students to do is grab your Greek New Testament. Keep test driving things. Don't focus on all the words on the page that you don't know, but get excited about how many words you can recognize and you do know. That can be really motivating to keep you going. I'd really like to encourage students, particularly students who are trying to learn Greek on their own, to consider my book. I've really tried to make it very clear, very accessible, uh, to add in encouragement along the way so that it becomes fun to learn this language. So I would encourage you with the book, the videos, the workbook, you really will be able to learn Greek and I think you'll have a fun time doing it.